everyone, Tara here with another HPV video. So today's topic is about pregnancy. What happens when you're pregnant and you find out that you have HPV? Or if you have started already started your family and you're looking to have more children and you get the news you have HPV? Or if someone tells you that you cannot have children if you have HPV? So this video is based on my experience. I am not a doctor. That's my disclaimer. I'll start off by saying that um, I found out that I had HPV at the same time that I was finding out that I was pregnant with my second child. So first pregnancy was fine. Nine months later, um, I'm getting checked up for my second pregnancy and test results came back abnormal pap. So they told me that I would have to get a colposcopy done, or COPO for short. Um, so I had the colposcopy, which is a biopsy. That's when they um, snip off a piece of your cervix to test and see if um, what type of HPV you have and um, the severity of it. So I had, um, I think I had like two copos. With that one pregnancy, I had uh, one copo and it turned out to be moderate lesions. Um, they can't do anything while you're pregnant. So you get the colposcopy to find out where you are. And then after you have the baby, they do another colposcopy to see if anything has changed. So when I had that second colposcopy done after having the baby, um, it came back as being high grade lesions. So next step was to schedule a LEAP procedure, which is L-E-E-P, a LEAP procedure. So with that, they actually take um, something like a cauterizing wire tool and um, they cut off your cervix or as much of it that they need to. Um, so they did like a hat cut is what they called. They did the rim, they cut around the rim of the cervix and then they cut up into the hole of the cervix. They cut off a large chunk of my cervix. So it was probably nine months after having the LEAP procedure that I got pregnant again. So mind you, I am in my childbearing years. I'm in a committed relationship. Um, you know, we have been together for quite a while, for seven years now. Um, so we just kept continuing our life. We didn't, we weren't like, okay, we have two children, uh, you have HPV, we should just stop having children now. It didn't affect my first pregnancy or any of my pregnancies at all. So we kept on with life as usual. I work a lot and I work hard. My cervix held up nice and strong. I didn't have any complications with that, with having them, uh, you know, cut off a section of my cervix and having it, you know, regenerate and grow back. It grew back just fine, nice and strong. And I was actually doing harder work back then. I was I, I was busting tables and fine dining. And it's pretty rough when you're on a three-man team in fine dining. I don't know if any of y'all know about that, but it is real. So I worked all the way throughout my pregnancy. I only took off, like, maybe about a week before I had the baby. She was delivered on time. Um, just fine. They did not have to give me any type of um, special vaccine or put anything, give the baby anything so that um, HPV wouldn't transfer to the baby. Um, I didn't have to worry about anything like that. So obviously to me, it does nothing to the baby. I've, I've had, um, I've, I've experienced HPV throughout three of my four pregnancies. So um after having my third baby, um, they wanted me to come back and, and do um, do another colposcopy and possibly a leap because it wasn't getting better. After that first leap, it, it grew back. It came back. It came right back because I didn't actually target the problem. I went in straight for, um, I just cut it off. I cut off the cervix. But the cervix is not causing the problem. The problem is an imbalance. It's a pH imbalance that caused an overgrowth inside of me. And that overgrowth, that whether it's bacteria or fungal, that is the problem. So I needed to treat my vagina, not just cut off the part that's sick because it just came right back. You know, my the environment wasn't right. So that's what needed to be corrected. And that's where I, um, we came up with the apple cider vinegar and baking soda baths. This is what you need to do. You use one third of a gallon of apple cider vinegar. You add it to your bath water. 
you run your normal bath. Add to that one cup of baking soda. And then you want to sit in the tub. You want to soak in there for at least 20 minutes. Make sure that the water reaches your cervix. That's very important. So um, I suggest that if you cannot reach your cervix using your fingers or using your imagination um you can take your bath water and use a douche don't use the stuff that comes with the douche um you're gonna fill it up with your bath water and just squirt it in that is the easy and best way that i think um you can accomplish that um before i mentioned using certain measurements inside your douche uh, but just to make sure that you're not using too much apple cider vinegar or too much baking soda in there, it would just be better and very simple to just put your bath water inside your dish and use that to reach your cervix. But it is important that it reaches your cervix because that's what needs to be treated. So the other thing that I suggest you do is to actually drink apple cider vinegar, baking soda, and water mixed into a cocktail daily at least once a day now i eyeball my measurements i don't actually use measuring spoons but because i'm making this video for people that's out there i will tell you that you can use anywhere between one and two tablespoons or so of baking soda that's how much i use i've heard some people telling me teaspoons and such but i just i don't use teaspoons i use like at least a full tablespoon one between one one or two tablespoons of baking soda my apple cider vinegar, I use about two to three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Um, you can mix it together into one cup of water. So one literal cup of water, one to two tablespoons of baking soda, and about two to three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You wanna drink that down daily, start your day with it because this is gonna balance the pH in your body. You need to put an alkalizing substance into your body to raise your pH so that you're not so acidic, um, giving those germs an environment to grow and thrive in. So um, very simple and very important that you do these things. Now you also wanna change your diet up some. Um, you wanna eat whole, foods you want to eat healthy foods um if you eat fast food you may want to uh, put a halt to that while you're doing this and while you're trying to get better because that food is way too acidic and bad for your system and it's just not going to help you out at all it's going to hinder your progress so cut the junk food as much as possible also um you want to make sure that you're eating salads um this what i was eating during this time was salads with avocado grapeseed oil because it's antifungal and antibacterial and it's um has it's great for your ph also um white vinegar i was putting white vinegar and grapeseed oil on my salads now whatever else you want to put on your salad is fine but just make sure you that you're putting grapeseed oil and white vinegar on your salad now um the next thing that I suggest is to eat a lot of dark leafy greens. Dark leafy greens are packed with vitamins and it's gonna help regulate your body, get you back on track. It pulls out the heavy metals that, that um, we ingest on a day-to-day -day basis just from us. You might drink a cold drink out of an aluminum can, aluminum can and that's heavy metals. You are uh, cooking in our pots, we're getting heavy metals. Um, you get heavy metals from just so many different ways. Um, even in your vitamins, you know, just we have a lot of metal in us. So we need to pull that out in order to get better. Um, another thing about HPV and pregnancy um, that I wanted to let you guys know is that you don't have to be afraid to start your family or if you're pregnant it's it's okay like it's not gonna affect your baby it's not gonna harm the baby now when I actually did my HPV cure I didn't know that I was pregnant because I didn't have a cycle so when I went in for my appointment to check the status of um, you know of my cervix and of the, the HPV I was diagnosed with they told me that I was pregnant um, three and a half months pregnant at that so coincidentally I had started this regiment when I was about one and a half months pregnant unknowingly and um, the pap smear results came back normal it's my first normal pap in about four years so 
um, they retested me, of course. They did the full HPV testing and came back normal again. So then they tested me one more time in this pregnancy, um, which also came back normal, negative, clear of HPV, which is great. So I cured the HPV while I was pregnant. That's that's really good. Like that, I'm I'm saying that because I want y'all to have hope that it's okay. Because they scared the shit out of me when they told me that I had HPV. I never heard of that. I'm like, HIV? No, HPV. And I, they're making it. They're the doctors are kind of not making a big enough deal out of it, but at the same time, the internet makes way too big of a deal out of it. Um, the chances of you getting cancer are so small. It's just really just keep up with it. And it's so simple to just take these baths. Um, and I mean, I'm getting great emails from you guys of people who are getting rid of this so quickly. I mean, I'm like people are getting results in a matter of weeks. And, and I mean, like one to two weeks is very 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 helpful it's a great cure um that regulates your body's ph so if you are sick i highly suggest that you try eight um try the apple cider vinegar and baking soda drinks if anything now i said the baths because this is something you know if you can get that that solution to reach your problem directly then and you know your vagina has a whole different pH from your body. Your vagina pH it should be between a 3.5 and a 4. Your body's pH needs to be a 7. So someone contacted me and told me that their pH actually read a 3 a 6.75. Now this is my opinion. Even though on the box directions it says that your body's pH should be between 6.5 and 7 or a 6.5 and a 7.5 is perfectly healthy and normal. If you're experiencing any type of problem with your body, that means that that 6.75 is not good enough for you. It has allowed something to start. So you need to put your help your immune system get that boost and you know kind of put yourself in overdrive a little bit. And you want to be on the higher side of seven. You want to be at least a seven if you're experiencing these problems and you're only a 6.5 or a 6.75. That's not good enough. Obviously, your body is still struggling. So um, please keep sending me your emails. Um, I love getting your comments and your questions. Um, what I want to tell you is that I also work a lot um, I know I'm mentioning this pregnancy and that pregnancy. I'm a busy mom. I have four kids <laughs> and they're all very young. Um, and I work full time and I have my own business as well. So um, I may not be able to answer your emails right away. And um, if you, if it's been too long since I answered your email, if it's taken me a week to get to your email, please send me a comment. Or shoot me another email so that I um, so that I can get to you because it's, it's important for me to answer your questions. Um, I wouldn't be for me. I, it just wouldn't feel right for me to put out information and then not be available for you to question me on it. Um, and when you question me, you send me on a mission to find even more information, and I just you know just tie in those ends a little bit better and put out um, the great. Um, the great advice that you give me, you know, I take heed to that and try to produce um, even better videos. So with the little time that I have, I appreciate y'all for um, for taking your time out to listen to me. And I hope that I'm adding uh, something to your life to help you out. So thank you very much. Um, and y'all have a blessed one. Thank